If your life is controlling how you think and feel, if your environment or your personal reality is reminding you of who you are as a personality, and the environment is that strong, and your body, which has been conditioned to be the mind emotionally, is running its programs and its habits, and you're so programmed into the predictable future because of the familiar past, because you've done it over and over again for years on end, wouldn't it be a good idea to close your eyes and eliminate the external environment? Play soft music in the background or put earplugs in so there's less sensory data coming into your brain so you can focus on your inner world. Sit your body down and don't let it get up and do things and eat and drink and feel. You say to the body, stay right there, you stay. And instead of thinking about the appointments and emails and texts and phone calls you have to make or what happened yesterday, the day before, or 10 years ago, you're conscious when you leave the present moment and you slip into that elegant moment, the generous present moment. That's what meditation is about, to get beyond the analytical mind, change your brain waves and fall into the operating system where those subconscious programs exist. And I'm gonna say that when you truly do this, and common people that look just like you all around the world in every culture are catching on that they are surrendering an aspect of the limited self every single day to join the greater self. And you know, we have these advanced workshops and we have 600 people or 700 people and it's, it's, we work, but it's the most gracious and fun time of people's lives because they're with a community of people that are doers. You know what? In some days we, we start at six in the morning, every morning, but in some days, I call the audience at four in the morning. Why four in the morning? Because they are instructed to understand about the pineal gland. And they understand about its metabolites that create a lucid experience. And how to begin to change those neurotransmitters into other ones. They're given a whole teaching on that. And their brain chemistry is ripe at four in the morning. And I say to them, you don't come in. Four in the morning, that door is closing at four in the morning, but if you don't come, I'm not going to take it personally. It just means you want your sleep more than the mystical. It means you just want your comfort more than the unknown. It means you want your coffee, the familiar, more than the unfamiliar. But the students that show up, what they're saying to that intelligence within them, I don't want my coffee today. I don't want my tea. I don't want my shower. I don't want my sleep. I don't want my bed. I don't want my cell phone. I want you. You are the object of my affection, and they mine for it until they make contact. And when they do, they go for the ride of their lives. And we have measured their brains when this happens. And they are processing amplitudes of energy that have never been recorded in the history of neuroscience. Most brain circuits fire at about 40 microvolts of energy squared. Our students are producing a million microvolts. 2.5 million microvolts, 4 million microvolts. Whatever is going on between their ears is more real than anything that's ever happened in their past. They're having a full-on sensory experience without their senses. And what would happen to you right now if your senses were amplified by 25%? Everything you were seeing, everything you were hearing, everything you were smelling, everything you were tasting, everything you were feeling. If your senses were heightened by 25%, so would your awareness. And if your awareness is amplified, so is your consciousness. And you can't have consciousness without energy. They work together and the brain is recording high amplitudes. And if experience enriches the brain and experience produces emotion, they are changed in a moment because the inner event is more real than any past external event. And the past is washed away. And that person can tell you the experience that they had, and I have to believe them. Because when we see their brains doing that, we know they can't make their brains do that. So then, in closing, great time to be alive in the world. Because in an age of information, ignorance is a choice. And that this is a time in history to not only know, but to know how. And to demonstrate all the changes you want to see in the world. I love the concept of emergence in biology. You ever see a group of fish all swimming the same way or a flock of birds all turning in one direction? If you were to study that phenomenon in biology, you would think that there was some leader that everybody was following, that it was a top-down phenomenon. 
Turns out, there is no leader. It's a bottom-up phenomenon. They are all one mind, and they are collectively sharing the same level of consciousness. There's a stigma that you and I have, that if you lead with too much passion in your life, you're going to get it in the end. Whether you're Gandhi or Martin Luther King or William Wallace or Joan of Arc or John Lennon or Abraham Lincoln, you lead with too much passion, most people get assassinated. But what if it's a time in history where it's not so important to die for the truth but to live for the truth? And what if you're working on your fear and anxiety and your neighbors working on their anger and bitterness? Instead of looking outside ourselves, we're looking within. And everybody begins to transmute these limited survival emotions into heartfelt, elevated emotions. And that everybody's leading. And there is a new mind, a new consciousness. And there's power in numbers. You can't take out everybody now, can you? The coming of the age that you hear about, the coming of that consciousness, isn't one person. It's every person. And so retreating from your lives, just for a few minutes every day, to remind yourself of a vision of the future, and not getting up until you are that person. If you're able to maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day, get ready, because something unusual is going to happen in your life. That's the law.